Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Jesus is Lord Ministries. Today's uh, September 2424. You won't see this again. So praise God and I uh, just want to thank you all for joining in. Today is Tuesday morning. I'm Pastor J.R. Wells. I'm bringing forth the word to you today. Today will be uh, message 17 of the red letter. It just seems like, you know, God's got me in this red letter about what Jesus talked about and how he thinks. And and I've been enjoying it. And the more you get into it, the more I get enjoyment out of it and the more I get out of it to share with you. And that's what I want to do. So, but uh, before we do, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. But also, uh, before we do, I like to thank Pastor Mike and Jesus is Lord Ministries for having us here the place is open seven days a week, three times uh, every day, 10, 2, and 6. And we want to ask that, you know, if you're coming by this way, stop in and say hi to us. And uh, if nobody's here, just call the number on the door. Pastor Mike could be glad to say hi to you. Uh, we welcome all of you that's joining in through the, the video and through the YouTube and, and uh, Facebook and all that other good stuff. And we thank you and praise you, Lord God. We give you the glory and the honor, Father. Now, Father, we just ask, go in prayer with me, if you would, please. Father, we just ask, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that you have your will done today in our hearts, Lord God. Lord, I thank you as you take these lips of mine, Lord God, to bring forth this word, Lord God. Lord, let it be from you for you and to the people that you want to hear, Father God. Father, I thank you that your word will not return to you void, that your word will be engrafted and implanted into those that hear, Father God. Father, they might not know it until maybe a day down the line or maybe years down the line, but Lord, I thank you. Now, Father, I thank you for those that are listening. Lord, give them an ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a boldness to do, Father God. Because, Father, we need that. We need to hear. We need to be doers. And we need to have boldness to do it, Father God. Let no man be held back from what you're about ready to do in our lives, Lord. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I like to start off, as you, most of you all know, I like to start off with the declaration or decree, however way you want to say it. Uh, i got to find it first. <laughs> I know i got one. A declaration and decree. And, and one of the reasons I do that is because it confesses. It makes us confess. And if you say it with me, it helps for you to understand the Word of God. So uh, if you would, please, just say it with me. Uh, I am blessed coming in, and I'm blessed going out. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If God, I said if God, be for me, who can be against me? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me, I shall condemn with the word of God. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Well, like I said, we've been doing the red let what's called the red letters. And uh, last week, I started out a little bit with, uh, uh, let me find last week's. Uh, I got it right here. Yep, 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 yep. I thought I did. Okay. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Sorry, I got my notes, got ready for today, and I forgot where I put last week's. Uh, we started out last week in, in, in the red letters speaking to the fact that and, uh, and, you know, you might say, well, you said this before, you keep repeating yourself. Well, it's not the fact that I'm repeating myself. It's the fact that faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. 
Sometimes we need to hear more than once in order to get it into our hearts, in order for us to get it into our spirit, in order for us to get it into a place where we can start speaking it out. Because, see, God spoke the Word. Jesus spoke the Word. Confession is an important part of Christianity. Because, see, the Bible says if we confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if we confess that God heals us, if we confess that God saved us, if we confess, see, what you're doing is when you're confessing, you are not only just speaking the Word of God, but you are speaking it so that you can hear it, and when you hear it and it comes back to you through that hearing, it's building up your faith, because why? Faith comes by hearing. How? By hearing, by hearing the Word, the Word of God and how we can do this. So I like to, you know, that's the reason sometimes you hear me starting all over again from last week to this week and not going on. But I I go on. But like I said, last week we talked about Jesus' confession. This week we're going to talk about God's confession. We should have talked about God's last week, but I felt and I I was directed to start with Jesus' confession so that we would understand. Listen to what Jesus said in 10 11, John 10 and 11. I'm sorry. It says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. See, Jesus is confessing who he is. He says, I am the good. See, and that's what we need to realize and we need to speak about. I am a God-believing, spirit-filled, Holy Ghost-walking person that speaks the word of God in my life so that I can move mountains. I'm a mountain mover. Matthew, I'm mean, sorry, Mark 11, six, Mark 16 20, says about, speak to this mountain and it shall be removed. Mark 11, 24 says, speak and you have faith. Have faith in God. What kind of faith? Faith in God. You get all that faith. You get to that mountain moving faith by speaking the word of God and, and getting it into your heart. Oh, you got to hang in there with me today. For some reason, I'm slowing up here. It's, then he, Jesus says in 8, 12, he says, I am. Oh, I love it when he says I am. Because see what it does, what it does, it does not give us any room to doubt. Are you with me? He, it does not give us any room to doubt. When he says I am, that's the end of it. Remember back in the beginning, uh, at Genesis 1, 1, and uh, God spoke the word? And the word became flesh, and the flesh dwelt among us. Jesus is that flesh. He is the I am. And when Moses was on the mountain, I said this last week and probably the week before, but when Moses was on the mountain, God, he said to God, God gave him all these instructions, and he said, but who do I tell Pharaoh that sent me? And God simply said, you tell him Jehovah sent you. Jehovah means I am. Think about that. See, when you go someplace, you can go in the I am. You can go with God being, you know, you're not the I am, but God is the I am that is in you. You got me? Do you understand it? God is the I am that is in you. Get get a hold of that now. Let me say that one more time because I don't think you got it yet. God is the I am that is in you. See, if you're a born-again believer, if you're a born-again Christian, you become like Jesus. I didn't say you were Jesus. Don't go telling everybody I said that. You become like Jesus because you fall in love with Jesus, and Jesus loved the world, and he gave. And that's what we do, that we give. Once we become like him, you know, we become what God wants us to be. And, and are we to love one another? That's what the word, word of God says. Are we to reach out to one another? That's what the Word of God says. Are we to help those that are in need? That's what the Word of God says. So by doing all that, you become what God wants you to be. Are we to feed people? The Bible says we are. Did Jesus feed people? Yes, he took a, two loaves and a, and a couple fishes, and he fed what they said, 5,000 men. And that's not counting the women and children, so I don't know how many that was, but just think about that. That's how great God is in you, to be able to feed 5,000. 
and more. How? By believing in your heart. By believing in your heart. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. I want to get into today's message where it says, talks about God, okay? I want to talk about God's confession. You know, uh, the more we read the Bible, the clearer it becomes that the Word of God in His confession, that the Word of God is His confession. From Genesis to Revelations, the Scriptures provide us with continually confession of God's greatness. His ability to love, His ability to do great things in our heart, His ability for us, His confession by declaring our belief in Him. When we confess Him, we become His confession. And then we can start talking about Jesus. We can start speaking about Jesus without being bored, without being... uh, Say, just say, without being afraid to, because see, the devil wants you to be afraid to talk about the Word of God. But you, we don't need to be afraid to talk about the Word of God. We need to be bold. Just look at your neighbor and say, be bold. Be bold and be strong in the Lord, for He's our God. Hallelujah. He's our God. He's our God. Psalms uh, 20, I'm sorry, Psalms 34.10 says, Those who seek the Lord, listen, oh my, I love this part. Listen, those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good things. Shall not lack. In other words, if you trust in the Lord and if you seek after Him, you're not going to lack for the things that's good for you. You're not going to lack. Lack. For those things that that you need. Why? Because God's going to provide them. You might say, well, I'm in a bad situation right now. i got a rent payment I can't make. i got an electric bill. i got groceries I need to buy. Well, I'm telling you, my friend, seek God first, and then you will see it come to pass. Matter of fact, the, the scripture that I wanted to start out with that I didn't, and I should have, it says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall, listen, all these things shall be added unto you. All what things? All the things that God has for us. See, Jesus brought life to to us. Jesus brought healing to us. Jesus brought sickness and disease. He took it away. See, Jesus fed the hungry. Jesus sought and, and looked at the blind person. He says, be made whole. And he, was, and he was made whole. Jesus, Jesus, and we're supposed to be an example to the world as Jesus was. And that's, our, that's what we need to realize. We are samples to the world because, see, you might be the only Jesus someone will see. Now, I heard that a long time ago, and I said, now, wait a minute, what are you, what, what are you saying I might be? See, sometimes we're in situations we get in a crowd or we get along with somebody and, and we just sit there and, and we look and, and, and we see somebody and we know they're hurting. And instead of going up there talking to them and you know, praying with them, we step back and say, oh, no, I can't do that. I'm not strong enough to do that. But if you say to God, God, give me the strength to go and speak to that person, God will. And then all of a sudden, you go and you tar- start talking to that person. Now, you might not start talking Jesus right away, but you talk and you get a conversation going. And, and then you find out that person needs healing. So you are able now, because of the grace of God that's in you, you're able now to to speak to this per- and pray for him. Is it okay? Am I doing all right this morning? You see, you, it's, it's, it's us getting up to do something. James says to be doers of the word and not just hearers. And, and I tell you what, like I said a long time ago, or maybe you heard it or be, me say this before, but it took me a while to understand what that meant. Because I remember back in the day, Kenneth Copeland says, James says to be doers of the word. Be doers of the word. And then he went on to something else. But he never explained about how to be doers 
Or maybe he did, and I just didn't listen. But see, I had to figure out, God, how do I be a doer? How do I be a doer of your word? I mean, it's got to be more than just hearing it. Because you said, be a doer, not just hearing. How do I be a doer? And it took a minute. That's, our, that's what we say nowadays. It took a minute. It took some time for me to realize that I have to be the one that gets up and goes and, and, and presents Jesus to somebody. That is being a doer of the Word, by presenting Jesus to somebody, by believing on the Word. See, if you believe the Word, that's a doer. See, how does faith come? I said it earlier, and I know I'm not supposed to repeat things, but I said it earlier. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the Word of God. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't preach without repeating, because I need to sometimes just to hear it myself. See, as a believer, to be a doer, you have to say, wait a minute, I got faith in God. If I got faith in God, then I must be able to be a doer because I believe that that person that are, it is sick can be healed. I believe they can be saved. I believe that their financial needs can be met. I believe that if a person is hungry, that, that he can be fed. And you might be the hands that does it. That's what I mean. You might be the only Jesus people sees. So if you belong to Jesus and Jesus is in your heart, don't be afraid to go and speak to someone. Because God's got them there for a purpose. He's got them there for you. Communicate the Word of God. Confess the Word of God. You might have to say to yourself, God, I'm going to go talk to him. God, I need your boldness. God, I'm going to go talk to him. God, he looks ugly and mean, but I'm going to talk to her. God, look at her. She looks like she's about ready to bite a head off a snake. But God, I've got to, I, I got to go talk to her. There's something in me that's got to talk to him. Got to talk to him. And you go and you, and you find out, that they're, that they're not as ugly as you think they look. They're, they're, and she's not as mean as, as you think she is, or he's not as mean as, as you think he is. They're, they're, they, all they want, all they want is someone to speak Jesus to them. And that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. All what things? The things that are confessed in the Word of God. All these things. The boldness that you need. What do you mean the boldness? Well, I need boldness to speak Jesus. Okay, God, so I'm seeking you, God. Father God, I'm seeking your kingdom for boldness. All of a sudden, you start feeling bold. Okay, God, what's the next thing i got to seek first for? Seek first the kingdom of God for love. See, a lot of us, we walk around with Jesus in our heart, and we know that we love Jesus. But the world doesn't know that we love Jesus. The world thinks you, you're mad at everybody because we, we, you know, but when we go and speak Jesus to people, I said when we go and speak Jesus to people, what happens is the love of Jesus that's in us comes out of us. The love, i got to say that again because for some reason I didn't get that. The love of Jesus that comes out of us that's in us because of Jesus, shows the world who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. I don't know, but that's good preaching. I'm not even hollering yet. I'm not even preaching yet. I'm just talking to you right now. Hallelujah. That's good stuff. I'm, I'm preaching myself happy. Hallelujah. See, when we confess the Word of God, listen to what uh, Philippians 4.19 says. Uh, yeah, 4.19. It says, My God, we just confessed it, My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. How much? How many needs? He said that I will supply your need. In other words, as a Christian, when we seek first the kingdom of God, we can say to God, God, I'm seeking your kingdom because I have a need. And when we find that need, then the kingdom of God comes in us, or we, we, we get received from the kingdom of God the word that we need. There's nothing that God will hold back from you if it's his will and if it's his word. Nothing. Nothing. God is obligated to stand by and care for his own. I'm one of his own. I'm sorry. God's, I, I'll say this again. God's obligated to care for me. Now, I didn't say I'm not commanding God for anything. I'm just saying because I'm in love with God and I got Jesus in my heart, 
God will show me things when I should go. Now, if I don't want to be ob- God to be obligated to me, then I don't have to receive it. But when I need something, I go to God and say, God, help me. Now, when I do that, God says, when you pray, what well, Jesus says, when you pray to the Father in my name, you shall have what you pray for. So, and, and we've got to be realistic about this because some people think they can pray for this blue, cheer to turn, this blue cheer to turn pink. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is true prayer. Prayer that says, God, I need you today. God, I need, show me your way. Lord, show me your will. Show me, Lord God. Show me the way I need to go today. Father, show me. And, and, and by doing that, what happens is this, is that the, the windows of heaven becomes open and God starts pouring out little things into you. You say, well, God never, yes, he has. When you ask him, say, God, help me. He's helped you. You just don't realize it's God. We need to sometimes just stop and thank God for what he's done. For what he's confessed over us. What he said to us. He said, Jesus says, you are my sheep. You are my sheep. Jesus says, I lay down my life for you. And if he, if he said that, then he means it. Then you belong to him. There's a story about Jesus, and, and it talks about uh, him having all these sheep, a hundred of them, and one of them runs away. What's he do? He leaves the 99 and goes after that one, that one that runs away because he don't want him out of the fold. He wants him safe. The shepherd will go after him and bring him back, back into that safety because, see, when you're on, on by yourself, when you're by yourself, the enemy has a way of getting to you and destroying you. But when you've got Jesus with you and you know he's your shepherd, he's going to protect you because we're covered by the blood of Jesus. The Bible says we're covered by the blood of Jesus. The, the, a matter of fact, in, in Revelations it says that we overcome him, the enemy, by the word of our testimony. See, we need to sometimes confess our love to Jesus, our testimony to Jesus. What is our testimony to Jesus? My love for him. And then we overcome the enemy, how? By the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb, which, which Jesus Christ shed for us, for me and you. That blood, that blood is so important. I think very back, back maybe... When we first started this, uh, and I, one of my couple first of my messages was talking about the blood. It took me about three or four weeks to get through. But uh, I need to go back and look at them myself, I think. But when we talk about the blood of Jesus, it covers us. It protects us. Just like the shepherd of his sheep. He, he walks around and, and he makes sure. 1, 2, 3, 6, 10, 12, 20, 99. Oh, oh there he is. Get back here. 100. And that's what he does. And it's just like us. Jesus looks down at us and says, wait a minute, don't go that way, please. You're going to get in trouble. Go this way. It's just like today. We, we have a, two ways of getting over here to the church. Actually, there's more than that, but the two ways we usually go. Well, usually we go up and over the mountain. Well, we looked at the mountain that it was thick of clouds. Thick. I mean thick clouds. So I said, you know, which way are we going here? And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm smart enough to say, Lord, what's the safest way? And I, I knew the answer. Don't get me wrong. But I wanted God to tell me the answer. And so he did. He says, go to highway and come up and come around. Don't go over the mountain because it's too thick. And you always got those individuals that's going through fog without their lights on. You always got one or two of them. When you're going, and you can't see them. Oh, I can see you just perfect, but I can't see them. See, and that's, and, and that's why I don't like going into the fall, because you can't see them, but, I can, but they can see me, because I keep my lights on. But anyway, I don't know how I got on that. And if you're going over the mountain, you're going in fog, turn your lights on. You know, Jesus says, be a light of the world. <laughs> that's way, one way of being a light. You know, because it could cause accidents. But anyhow, let's get back to this word here. God confesses. He says these words. He said, my God shall supply all. My God, my God, is he your God? 
Is He your God? My God shall supply all my needs. And, and that's what I like. See, my heart grows strong. And in, my faith surges when I hear this, that my God, wait a minute, wait a minute, just stop for a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, just stop for one minute. Listen, listen. My God. My God. He might be your God, but he's also, he's my God. That's what I want you to get a hold of today, that God is your God. And when you become, in, when you become one, one with him, he takes care of us. He takes care of us. Be, why? Because we are believers and we have a shepherd. Jesus is sitting on the throne with God the Father right now. And the enemy is coming up to, to God the Father. It says this in the Bible. It says that the, that the devil's coming up every day being accusers of the brother. I'm a brother, and he's accusing me of stuff every day. And God says, well, let's wait a minute. Oh, he may have almost done that, but he asked for forgiveness before it happened. Oh, look at her. Look at her. Look at that one person over there. She thought, well, wait a minute. Oh, she just asked for forgiveness in Jesus' name. Can't do nothing about it. Can't do nothing about it. You with me? Are you with me this morning? Come on now, help me out, help me out. Say amen or owe me. Now listen to what Isaiah 54, uh, 54, 17 says. Now I think most of you might know this scripture, but it says, No weapon, how many? No weapon formed against me, against you, shall prosper. This is, this is the word of God speaking directly to me. No weapon formed against you, I'm a you, or, and you're you, whether you like it or not, you're you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Did you notice what he said? No weapon formed against you, be, me, shall prosper. Every weapon that the enemy has against us shall not prosper. And then it says every tongue. That's the tongue of the devil coming up trying to be an accuser of the brethren. But God says, every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you, be me, me, I shall condemn. How? With the word of God by saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I gave all that away. Yeah, I may have messed up. But when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I was forgiven and I'm still forgiven. That's the word of God that we need to use. Wait a minute. Yeah, you can accuse me. I may have messed up, but I'm forgiven because of the blood of Jesus. I can walk free because of the blood of Jesus. I'm set free because of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And it says this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is for me. Hallelujah. Then it goes on to say in Isaiah 41.10, it says, you ready? Listen. I want you to hear this. Fear not. Fear not. See, the enemy wants to throw fear at us in every way that he possibly can. He wants to throw fear. He wants to throw discouragement. He wants to throw despair at you. He wants to throw that you're broken, you never be fixed again. He wants to throw things at you like never before. But God says to fear not, for I am... I am with you. Who's a you? I'm a you, and you're a you. You are the one he's talking about. Fear not, because God is with me. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Hallelujah. Listen to what it says. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I am your God. My God. He's my God. He's your God. That's what we need to understand here this Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock in the morning. I know some of you just crawling out of bed. But listen, whether you're listening to me Tuesday morning or if you're listening to me two weeks from now or next day or next day, Jesus Christ wants you to realize that if you got Him, 
You belong to him. He is your God. It says, go ahead and say it. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No, I'm sorry. I read. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. And listen what he says. He says, I will. He will. He will. Say it with me. He will. Strengthen me. Or I'm going to back up. I'm, see, I'm making it personal, but it is personal. I will strengthen you. You are you, and I'm a you. So he's talking about us. He's talking about me. So I can say, he will strengthen me. Yes, and you can say, he will strengthen you. You, me, yes, that's, how, that's what I mean. We can, we can confess his word because he confessed his word. That's what he's saying. I, I'm confessing my word that I'm going to strengthen you. These are my promises to you. I, God is saying it, not J.R. Wells. The Bible, the B-I-B-L-E is saying it. I will strengthen you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I am your God. Oh, I wish I could get this across. I am your God. And when you're weak, I will strengthen you. When you're going through the, through the valley, I will strengthen you. When you're up on the mountaintop, I will strengthen you. When you're down in the valley, I will strengthen you. When you're going through hard times, I will strengthen you. God will be with us. All we got to do is remember, He confessed that He's our strength and our stronghold and our strong tower. Read some of the Psalms sometimes. He is our stronghold and our strong tower. Psalms 27. Read it. He's ours. He's ours. And as we know that He's ours, then we know that we can walk with Him, that He will strengthen us. I'm going to go on and say here, I, I, I will strengthen you. Then it goes on to say this, which I find that is, that, that is very awesome that He says these. He says, I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. God's going to uphold us with His righteous hand. God's not going to let us down. God's not going to turn His back on us and, and, and for us to be turned away. No, God's going to be with us. I'm going to try to get to Psalms 27. I want to read that. But God is with us. See, it's our choice whether we accept the fact that Jesus Christ is with us or not with us. You know, I, I'm, I'm the one, I'm the kind of guy that says, hey, if the Word says it, I'm, I'm it. Listen to what uh, Psalms 37, 5 says. It says, commit your way to the Lord. Uh-oh. It says, commit your way to the Lord. And I didn't even get to Psalms 27 yet. I'm at Psalms 37. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him. That means everything you got, my friend, mama, dad, sister, brother, aunt, and uncle, children, grandchildren, everything you got, trust in God. Trust in God. Trust in God. Listen, why? Trust in Him, and He, being God, shall bring it to pass. Bring what to pass? The things that you're trusting Him for. Listen, I know you're out there and you're saying, well, I can't make, make this payment. I can't make that payment. Put your trust in God. Take, take away what the world's saying. Say, you ain't got enough. Put it in God and say, wait a minute, with my God, I can do it. With my God, I can help. I know you heard me say this many, many times before, but when I fell 61 feet and I couldn't get back up to work, I, we were down and out. We were in need. But we kept our trust in God. We kept our trust in God. And when we needed a nickel, I know you heard this before, if you did, if you listened to me at all. If you, when we needed just a nickel for a loaf of bread, you say, well, that ain't very much. No, it ain't. But when you need that nickel for a loaf of bread and you don't have it, you've got a choice. Go in the corner, ball and squall, or to get with your wife, or, yeah, my wife, or your husband, wives and husband get together, because it says when a wife and husband prays, it says this in Peter, when a wife and husband pray together, when a husband prays for their wife. See, but we got together and we prayed, Lord, what, what are we going to do? 
I got to make a trip tomorrow and I don't have no gas. What are we going to do? Lord, I got, we, we need something to eat. Well, I, don't, I don't know what to do. But you know what? I put my trust in him. And we went out to that mailbox and we opened that envelope that was in that mailbox. No name, just my name on it. Don't know how it got in there. And, it, and I opened it up and had one dollar and a quarter in it. It was the happiest day of my life. Well, besides accepting Jesus and my wife marrying me, but you understand what I'm saying. It was one of those good days that you jump up and down and you say, my God is so good. Yeah, but the devil said, now what are you going to do with a dollar and a quarter? I said, devil, first of all, all I needed was a nickel. Second of all, I'm taking a quarter and finding a way to get it back to God. See, when you trust God, he will supply. When you, he, when you trust God, he will supply. When we had Rhonda's uh, duster, it, it rode down the road sideways because the A-frame cracked out and busted. But we're going down the highway just like we own the thing. And, and, you know, we pull up to the gas station, not one nickel in our pocket, go in to pay for the gas. Somebody walk out, here's $5 to put in your gas tank. That's God. Why? Because I trusted him. We trusted him. We put our trust in God. See, and God will do the same thing. You put your trust in God. If you say, God, how, do, how am I going to get my rent payment made? Pray with him and he will show you. He will put little ideas in your head. Maybe there's people out there you need to call and say, hey, I need help. Don't be afraid to ask for help if God puts them on your heart to ask for help. Rhonda and I, we ran a food pantry for 30 years. We've seen people come in and go out, come and go. But, you know, and, and, and most of the time, uh, well, I was going to say no, most of the time. A lot of time, people will say to me, oh, I'm so embarrassed in being here. What, what are they going to say on me? And it, we just looked at them and loved them and said, hey, we've been there and done that. You know what I'm saying? See, God provided for them. Oh, but my pride, I'm so embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Hey, you got a need. If you're a tither and you believe God and you're a giver, go to God and say, God, I need, I'm, I need help. You know, the biggest prayer that I ever heard someone say that you can pray is, Help! Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. However way you want to say it. Jesus, I need help. I need, I need your help. I need to get this bill paid, and I ain't got it. God will show you how. I'm promising you that. I don't have no groceries on the table. God will show you how to do it. I promise you. God will show you, but you have to be the one to go to him. Let me finish this. It says, commit. Uh, let me see, where am I at? Ver, Psalms 37. I'm just going to back down here a minute, okay? Trust in the Lord. I'm going to read verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on, his, feed on His faithfulness. Not your faithfulness, but His faithfulness. Feed on His faithfulness. Delight, here it is. <laughs> this, this is where, where we all miss it. Because when we get ourselves in a jam, when we get ourselves jammed up, and we, we don't know which way to go, we forget this part. We forget to delight ourselves in the Lord. See, he says, delight yourself also in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. See, what does that mean? That means, to me it means a couple things, but one thing it means to acknowledge him. It means to worship him. It means to praise him. It means to let him know that, hey, I can't do it without you. And then it goes on to say, but listen to this. I read this for a purpose. It goes on to say, I'm just going to start all over again with verse 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he, who? He, shall give you the desires of your heart, or the desires of, that you have a need of right now. Now, the desires of your heart is something that God's placed in there. And, it's, and that's a whole together different sermon altogether. But what we're talking about here today, if you confess the word of God, my God shall supply all of my needs. How? By his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I don't have it, Lord. I need your help. I'm delighting in you, Father God, for, for the answer. Lord, here I am. I'm delighting in you for the answer. I don't have the answer, Lord. 
Lord, I don't know. All of a sudden you hear this in your heart. Hey, call this number here. You say, well, I never called that number before. Who's that number? Don't worry about it. Just do what God says. Just do what God says. Or maybe he might say, hey, just call somebody and tell them you're going through a rough situation. Do they know where you can get help at? They might be the ones that help you, but you're not asking them for help. You're asking them for some direction that God's told you to call them. Okay? We've asked people for help. Which way do we go, to the left or to the right? I don't know. But, Lord, I'm delighting in you. Show me how to do it. Show me what to say. Show me how to walk. Show me, Lord God. Help me delight in you, Lord God. And he says, and I shall give you the desire of your heart. Right now, if you have a need, that's the desire of your heart. If you've got a family to feed, that's the desire of your heart to feed that family. You've got rent to pay. That's the desire of your heart. You've got bills piling up, and they need to be paid. That's the desire of your heart, that they're paid. Don't let the enemy... Don't let the enemy steal from you. Confess the word of God. Confess the word of God. Listen, Psalms uh, 118 says this, verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I just told you, confess the word of God. Say it with me. The Lord is on my side. I will not. I will not. I will not. Fear. Fear. You understand what he says? Commit yourself to the Lord. Come, delight in him. And he will give you the desires of your heart. And he says, the Lord is on my side. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ is on your side. All you've got to do is speak to him. And fear not. Listen to what it says. And fear not. The Lord is on my side. What? Oh, glory be to God. I forgot what the end of this said, but listen. What can man do to me? Oh, it can come at you at all sides. It can come for, to you from the front, the sides, and the sides. As long as you've got that armor of God on, it can't hurt you. What can man do to you? You said, yeah, but pastor, you forgot about the back. No, I didn't because God's got your back. He's got your back. Read, read, read even Ephesians where he talks about the armor of God. You see, there is nothing for you back. Why? Because God's got your back. Listen, the Lord is on my side. I double dog dare you to confess that right now. Right now, right where you're at. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? That's a confession from the word of God that you're speaking. That you're speaking. First Chronicles uh, 16, 21 through 22, it says, He permitted no man to take them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sakes, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. He's talking about us. We're his anointed ones. If you got Jesus Christ in your heart, if, you, if you're born again, if you, if you made a confession, Jesus, here I am, help me, help me. Help me. i got to get to Psalms 27. I was going to shut it down, but I'm going to Psalms 27. Here it goes. You ready? Here it goes. Here it goes. Psalms 27, verse 1. The Lord is my strength. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I messed up. Back up. Back up. I'm reading something. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The salvation doesn't only mean being saved. It's everything that compared with being said. It's everything that God's got belongs to you. Whom shall I fear? Once again, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength. Listen. Please. If you don't hear nothing else today, church, listen. The Lord is my strength. The strength of my life. See, your life means something to God. You mean something to God. He's yours. He's yours. Whom shall I be afraid? Once again, whom shall I be afraid? If you got the Lord on your side, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. Listen, whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked comes against me, and I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, he will come against you. And it says to eat my flesh, my enemies and my foes. They stumble and fall, though an army may encamp against me. My heart shall not fail. 
What army is he talking about? The army of things that you, are, that you don't have, that you need, that you're in need of. When that, it comes in like an army, I'm telling you. It comes in like an army. Isaiah describes it as a flood. It comes in like a flood. But he says the, the Lord will lift up a standard to protect you. Watch over you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I will not be afraid. Why? Because God is on your side. And if God is on your side, who can be against you? Who can be against you? Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may arise against me, in this I will be confident in. In this I will be confident in. In this. What's this? One thing thou desired of the Lord. That's the confidence that you've got to believe in, that you desire of the Lord. It's your desire of the Lord. One thing I've desired of the Lord, and I'm just going to let you finish reading it out. Right now, right now, whatever it is you have a need of, whatever it is you think that there's no way out, God will show you the way out. Whatever it is you think, I don't know which way to go. God will direct your paths. God will direct you. But you know what? If you're a born-again Christian, you have every right to ask God to fulfill the desires of your heart. You know why I can say that? Because, see, if you're a born-again Christian and you're really born again, the desires in your heart is what God placed in them. You with me? See, God puts things in your heart for you to get a hold of so you can do seek after. Why? Because they're good things of him. Now, if you're not a born-again Christian, if you're, if you're just there and you're so-so, yeah, well, I accepted Jesus many years ago, but if you're not walking with him, I'm asking you to turn, your, turn, turn around and start walking with him once again. Start seeking after him. Start delighting him. Now, if you've never been born again, I'm going to ask you just simple prayer. Just raise your hands up to God. You don't even have to raise your hands, but, but I believe in just raise your hands up to God. God, this, this Jesus that this pastor's talking about, how do I get him? You simply say, Father God, forgive me of my sins and let Jesus come into my heart. Wash me clean with the blood. Wash me clean of my sins and I am forgiven because of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, if you prayed that prayer, and you meant it, let us know here. Let us know. Would you please just let, let someone know that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let someone know that God has made a difference in your life. And if you're out there and you've got a need, I'm telling you, if you've got a real need, and, and, and that need just seems like it just keeps not being met, call somebody. And I, I'm going to put this out there because I'm sure Pastor Mike don't mind. Call here. Call the church. That's what we're here for. If he can't help you, he'll turn you to the right way to can. He'll show you the right way, which way to go. Text us. Write us on Facebook. We're going to be on Facebook when, once this message comes back to me. I'll put it on Facebook. Don't be afraid to say, hey, I heard your message and I need some help. Let us know and we'll find a way to help you. When we go to YouTube, go to YouTube and look up Jesus is Lord Ministry. It's a little green uh, thing with the big J in it. And, and just click on that and you can see all the preachers that preach and everything else. And, and every one of them you can write, say, write to or talk about and say, hey, can you help me make a comment in their little thing? So right now, I want to leave you with this, with this message. Stephen, I want to leave you with this message that God confesses over you that you are His and He is yours. I will not let you down. I will not leave you alone. I will be with you every step of the way. Every step of the way. And all we have to do is say, Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord.